Good morning, everyone. It's Friday. For those of you who are done with the work week as of this afternoon, congratulations, you made it through another week. I will be working all weekend because that's just what I do. Um, so if you have not yet signed up for the course tomorrow for the self-alignment workshop, <clears throat> um, do that now. You have about 24 hours. I'm cutting off the sign-up registration at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it'll be like 9 a.m. tomorrow morning for me, which I'm in Central. Um, um, actually, let's, I'll do it like at 11. That seems a little bit early for those on the West Coast if you're waking up and um, still want to sign up for it. It is at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time tomorrow. It's going to be really amazing. We have a lot of people signed up already. Um, I'm so excited for it. I actually have not been this excited to do a workshop in a very long time. And I think it's just because I'm so excited to share all of the things that I have learned about manifesting. Um, just about, and, and really it's not even about manifesting, it's about just being happy. Like waking up every single day and feeling good and knowing that it's okay to feel good and that even if bad things happen that you can feel good again. That's the beauty of it. So um, the workshop is tomorrow. If you can't make it tomorrow, you can't make it to the live, but you would still like to get the recording, you can certainly register. I will be sending the recording out tomorrow evening, a couple of hours after the workshop. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a couple more workshops towards the end of October. Um, so I will announce those when they're ready. So if you can't make it tomorrow, no problem. Also, we have the meditation and the Reiki healing circle on Sunday evening. The weekly meditation um, and Reiki healing circle, which is going to be very profound this week after manifesting with the Libra New Moon last week. Um, I wanted to incorporate... Um, a lot of self-love, self-forgiveness, self-empowerment within this meditation. Um, and you also get a dose of Reiki healing for the week. So um, I have had nothing but positive feedback with it. Um, and so I hope you can join us. All right, so let's get into, oh, and the six-month um, forecasts for 2020 six-month forecast pre-order. If you want to pre-order your forecasts, um, those are available. If you are a part of the pre-order, you will get um, your your 2020 forecast, the first six months of 2020, um, the first two weeks of November, and I will be including December if you pre-order. And um, there's already a lot of people that have decided to do that too. So get yours while you can. Um, so the energy, we have some squares happening today and, um, and, and actually it's not even like, they're not even exact squares today, but we're starting to feel the energy. It's like the energy is sort of ramping up to these squares. And then this weekend we have this, um, it's called a quincunx. And what it is basically when planets are in a quincunx with each other, or when one specific planet is in a quincunx. It's like if you look at a dice, if uh, um, you know a die, and um, you look at the five, right? So you have the four corners, and then you have the one right in the middle. So you have the four points. So we have four planets here, and then the one in the middle, and the one in the middle is the one that is sort of challenging the relationships of all. Even though this is, these are all squares, right? So these are still, these are already challenging relationships, but the one in the middle, and the one in the middle this weekend, tomorrow is Mercury. And so it is going to be in a um, quincunx with Chiron and a semi-square with Jupiter. So, um, and I have my notes down here, so that's what I keep looking at. Um, so what it is, it's like, you're going to have a problem with what, you know, like, what is it that I'm really thinking? Do I really want to, it's like you could possibly say things that you don't really mean. You know what I mean? It's like, do I really feel that way or am I just saying this? Like the ego could get very, very involved. If you are somebody who is in serious, like seriously out of alignment, which means 
you're super sad right now, you're really angry with things right now, you're just flustered. Like tomorrow's one of those really flustered kind of days, right? So the best way to get through this energy tomorrow, plus we also have um, something on, going on, on on Sunday as well, and I'll get to that here in a minute. But if you're if you wake up tomorrow and you feel this really heavy, like oh, like weight almost on your chest, or like you feel like there's this, you you automatically are feeling the negative actions of the planets, right? Um, I want you to meditate first thing in the morning, wake up and, um, take a couple of deep breaths, listen to some music while you're making your coffee in the morning. Before you get out of bed, imagine a white light surrounding you. Keep reminding yourself that, um, if there is something that needs to come up tomorrow for you to heal, it, it probably will. Um, I know that a lot of, like, some astrologers, <laughs> I would never tell anybody to not live their life just because of an astrology aspect that's happening in a relationship because we learn lessons through all of them, right? Every every single thing that happens, we're learning a lesson through it. But I know some astrologers, astrologers that are like, I'm not doing anything tomorrow. I'm going to lay in bed and not even move. So um, I don't recommend that. If you want to, you know, it is the fall in the States now, so it might be chilly this weekend, and you can probably just curl up with a blanket and whatever, but, um, Sunday, we have Mercury is opposing Uranus in Taurus, so Mercury is in Scorpio, Uranus is in Taurus, and so there's not going to be a lot of rational thoughts, right, because uh, the opposite, when you're, when you're opposing something, it's almost like you're taking away the power of one of the relationships or one of the planets, um, or it's like a discombobulated relationship between the two. So there's there's a lot with Mercury that's going on since Mercury has now moved into Scorpio. There's a lot with Mercury that's going on. Um, so just watch your words. You know, really think before you speak. And if somebody says something to you that hurts your feelings. Um, you can kind of think of it as, um, like thank them and be like, I appreciate you helping me on my healing journey. Like that's what, that's one of my biggest things that I say when I get my feelings hurt. Yeah. See arguments and fights, arguments and fights. Um, five of wands. That's the first card that came out and this could really start today. I mean, this, this kind of energy that we're feeling for the next few days could really start with you today. So, um, and technology could get out of whack. Just like, just be careful, you know, just, it, and go with the flow. Just know that if something doesn't work out, and this is one of the things that I'll be teaching tomorrow, or we'll be talking about tomorrow, how rejection is actually a blessing. If something doesn't work out for you, a relationship hasn't worked out, if a job offer hasn't worked out, if you're trying to get something and it just ha just won't work out and won't work out and won't work out, five of wands, right? You always feel like you're constantly fighting for something to just work in my life. That's because something better is coming along, right? Wheel of Fortune, something better is coming along. <laughs> I love it when the cards work with me and not against me. So I was meditating for a few minutes before I started the camera. And I heard, Betsy, you need to slow down. Because when I get really excited and I start talking about something that I'm super passionate about, I talk really fast. So I'm trying to consciously, I mean, I am ruled by Mercury in a lot of ways. So in Mercury, my ruling planet is going to be all sorts of out of whack for the next couple of days. So I am consciously having to remind myself to like, slow your, slow down, Betsy. Like, take a breath, take a deep breath, right? <laughs> so just remember this weekend, and this is a reading for the entire weekend, because I'm going to be really busy this weekend, so I'm not going to do a daily reading, but... This weekend, um, even if it feels like something that you're struggling with that just doesn't work out and doesn't work out and doesn't work out, 
rejection for me and i'm gonna i'm gonna t again tell you guys how i came to this but rejection for me is like i thank the universe like thanks thank you for not putting me in that position thank you for not bringing that person into my life thank you for taking me on a different journey or going in a different direction right you cannot hold on to and some of this might have to do with like finances for you guys but with the four of wands or four of uh four of pentacles four of wands that's interesting but with the four of pentacles this talks about um really clinging to what we already know to be true and not opening yourself up to what the universe wants to bring into your life and to help you expand yourself which would be the three of pentacles so you need to take a step back from the four of pentacles to the three of pentacles and kind of start over again and say what is it that i can learn from this because the three of pentacles is very entrepreneurial it's, it's very much, I'm not only the teacher, but I'm also the student. Right? And I have to sneeze. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. That was a really weird sneeze because normally I sneeze extremely loudly. So the fact that that was so quiet, and I didn't even try to make it quiet. I sneeze really loudly because it's satisfying. <laughs> you know, when you like hold in a sneeze, it's like you can't release, it's like an energy release when you sneeze really loudly. So that's why I do that. But yeah, that was really interesting because I never sneeze that softly. Um, okay. Yeah, so I do feel like there's going to be, I feel like there's going to be a moment, maybe a couple, where you're sort of asked to let go and to trust. A card flip over? Nope. Guess what, you guys? I forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I need to write myself a reminder and put it on like a sticky note and set it on my computer before I start. <clears throat> so we have the chariot and the nine of cups. So, oh, and I love this. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. Because when you release the expectations of how you thought everything was going to turn out or how you thought everything was going to go, um, you release the expectations. You go with the flow of the universe. You don't argue and fight with the energy. You allow yourself to learn new things. And there you go. You're like, you're off. It's like a bullet in the night, right? With the chariot and the nine of cups. And that's where you can manifest from. You can manifest from a place of knowing that you're on the right path. Even if you don't know where you're going. Even if you don't know um, your destination, which there is no destination, which is, a, you know, that's kind of tricky, right? You gotta, you gotta remember that there isn't actually a destination for us. But when you trust and have faith in the universe, and we've talked about this before, right? Having faith in the universe or having faith in God, source, whatever higher energy you pray to or meditate to or whatever you want to call it, when you have faith in that higher energy and having faith does not mean hoping. Having faith means knowing, knowing that you're being taken care of for your highest good. Even if you don't like it, even if you don't like the way that the journey goes. Um, I have people say to me, I just wish that I could go back to this time in my life where I felt really, really good all the time. And I say, well, why, why can't you feel that good now? Well, I, I had the great job and I had the friends and I could go do all the things and I, I was making good money and, and I don't have any of that now. I don't have the really good job and I'm not making all the money. And I can't go do all the things and I can't 
plan trips and this and that and whatever. When, you, when people say that to me, you have to realize and recognize that you're placing your happiness on and your value on the things that you had and the things that you were doing. You weren't placing your value on the person that you are. You were placing your value and your worth and how good you were feeling on an outside source. And you weren't looking for that inside source saying, I'm just going to make myself feel good because I know that I'm a good person and I know that I can and I know that I have big plans and I know that I deserve the very best. And I know that every single day I'm learning new lessons and I'm growing. And when you start to place yourself in a feel good mentality and know that it's okay to feel good, that you don't have to suffer, that you don't have to be in challenging situations all the time, that you don't have to sacrifice yourself to, to, to be successful or to succeed, when you know that you can feel good without having all the things in your life, you will be amazed at how fast your life turns around. It's, it's, a, thought, it's, it's a thought process. The law of attraction at its finest. Feeling, genuinely feeling good. So you can go back to that time and remember how it felt to feel good but you cannot feel good because of the things that you had or the things that you were doing. You need to find ways to feel good now without having all those things, right? Um, it's so fun. The cards are literally saying, if you feel like fighting this weekend, don't do it. With the high priestess, don't do it. Don't, you know, if somebody tries to pick a fight with you, you can say, Betsy told me not to argue. I don't care. You Blame me. Blame it all on me. I don't care. Do it. <laughs> I really don't. Just, do, just blame me. Um, because um, you're not going to be able to get your point across. Things will become a little bit discombobulated if you try and figure something out with somebody. Right? So if you're seeing that somebody is triggering you or you're seeing that you're triggering somebody else, I want you to look at them and be like, can we table this? Can we put a pin in this discussion and come back to it later? Um, because that is a shift of the energy right there. That saying your emotional state is more important to me than me being right or me needing to prove how I'm right. You see what I mean? And that's how you shift the energy into feeling good. Yay. And again, this is something that we're going to go really in depth with tomorrow. How to genuinely feel good every single day. Okay. So the six of wands on the wheel of fortune. There is a shift there this weekend where you're going to recognize how your energy affects everything else in your life and how you present yourself to other people, how that affects everyone in your life. So let's look at the four of pentacles here. And you know what's interesting is, you know, some people don't even know what they're holding on to. Like, really tightly. Some people don't even realize that they are sabotaging themselves by not letting the flow of the universal energy move through them, right? So we have the Knight of Wands and the Four of Pentacles. And, um... Sometimes, so, so when you are in a position in your life and you feel like you can't move in any direction, I want you to just close your eyes. You feel stuck. 
You're like, oh my God, I can't. Like, I don't even know what to do with myself. You feel stuck, right? I want you to close your eyes and I literally want you to ask yourself, what is holding me back? Simple question, right? What is, what, how am I holding myself back? And then I just want you to get quiet and listen to what comes up because your higher self will tell you, but in the chaos of the world and the distractions of the world, we can't hear our higher self in the distractions of the world. You think you can hear your higher self in traffic? I guarantee you, you cannot because um, there, there's a lot, right? The honking and the yelling and the screaming and the screeching and the hand gestures. <laughs> Can't hear your higher self in traffic. But when you're in silence, and this is why every single day I want you to wake up every single day um, and feel good, like right off the bat. I mean, I told you guys, like some of the things that I've done to really turn some, like eat, just turn my energy around. I wake up every single morning <laughs> like a bullet coming out of a gun because I am like ready. You cannot stop this girl in the morning. I have always been a morning person and it sickens some people. Like some people are like, really, could you do that somewhere else? I haven't even had, like I don't even need a cup of coffee anymore. I still drink coffee because I love the way it tastes. But um, it, there, was a, there was a while there that I was like dragging my ass out of bed and I was like, oh my God, I can't. Now I'm up at like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning and I'm ready to go. How? I mean, and it's not like that every day. I have bad days. Everybody has bad days. We're all human, right? How do I do that? I choose to feel good every single day. I go to bed choosing to feel good when I wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning and I say, today's going to be another one of those really great days and I'm going to get a lot done. And then I give myself time to rest. And I give myself time to relax. And I give myself time to do things that I really enjoy. It's not always go, 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 right? And allowing yourself to learn new ways of just existing and being happy, it can, it can turn your life around, and especially for those who are just coming out of the dark night of the soul or trying to figure out how to come out of the dark night of the soul, just allowing yourself to breathe and stretch and protect your energy and, you know, wake up in a way that um, you're allowing yourself to be happy and to feel good and know that it's okay to do that, right? So we have the Ten of Cups on the Three of Pentacles. Like this morning, it's getting really chilly now. Like it's finally switched, the weather finally switched from summer to fall, because it was like still 90 degrees last week. It was ridiculous. But it's finally switched and so it was really chilly this morning, so I've decided I'm gonna do my walk later on in the day when it's a little bit warmer. And I was like, what? I'm not doing my walk this morning? That's crazy. <laughs> that's why this is coming out a little bit earlier, because I didn't actually do my walk this morning. But that's what I mean. When you start to allow yourself to learn new ways of being happy and not waking up going, ugh, I have to go to that office again with that cubicle. Oh my God, I can't. When you, when you allow yourself to stop hemming and hawing and being miserable about the journey that you're on, instead of paying attention to the lessons that you're learning, you're just miserable, right? This is saying, pay attention to what you're learning in life and allow yourself to teach yourself new ways to be happy to the Ten of Cups, right? And the Eight of Cups on the chariot, walking away from those emotionally charged situations that you no longer need to be in. If your environment is toxic, you don't have to stay. I know it feels like you do, but things can change in your life. When somebody tells me that they're not able to do something or they're not able to leave their toxic life or leave their toxic person or leave this or leave that, I look at them and I'm like, there's always a way to do it. There's always a way to do it. There's always a way that you can change your life for the better. Always. I've been in most circumstances, most challenging circumstances. So... And it's not that I feel like I have all the answers for you, but we can get you there. 
We can get we can get it so you have the answers for you. So let's see what this nine of cups is because once you get to a point in your life and you've shifted the energy and you are consciously feeling good every day, consciously, choosing to feel good, four of wands at the bottom of the deck, choosing to feel good every single day and allowing yourself to do that, you know that you can manifest anything in that, in that state of mind. And you also know the meaning of divine timing and how when you feel good in your present moment, regardless of where you are in your life because you choose to, that whatever it is that you are manifesting from the highest for the highest good for you will show up when it's supposed to, whether that means it's in two days, whether that means it's two weeks, whether that means it's two years. I know I jumped from two months to two. <laughs> I skipped two months. That's okay. Um, doesn't matter because you know that's what's having, that's, that's what faith is all about, right? Which goes hand in hand with feeling good because you know that justice card on the nine of cups is saying that's how you have karmic retribution. That's how you have good karma in your life by genuinely feeling good. It's so funny. Um, so with all this like really wet weather that we have been, ha we've had lately and stuff like that, and I go on my walks and I'm walking along and I'm walking along and then I see those stranded like worms and snails and, and I feel really bad for them. And I've never been like a squirmy, like I can pick up worms. I can pick up like bugs don't bother me. Worms don't bother me. And my stepdad, like I used to ask to put the worms on the hook when my stepdad would take me fishing when I was little. I was such a tomboy. So I, I've been saving them. <laughs> I know I'm so weird. I've been literally saving, like taking the worms off the sidewalk because they dry out when the sun comes out and they get stranded and they dry out and I feel really bad. And it like hurts my soul. And they're so good for the soil and they're so good for the environment. So anyways, but in doing that every day, like every time I save one, I'm just like, oh, good, I've saved another soul today or I've saved another... Whatever, who knows? I'm sure that they do. But um, that's what I mean by allowing yourself to um, gain good karma. You know, we always talk about the bad karma and how karma sucks this and karma sucks that. And, you know, they'll get their karma. How about the good karma? How about the good stuff? How about feeling really good about yourself every single day to the point to where um, you want to make others feel good? You know, you walk through the grocery store and that old lady down there who's scowling, you smile at her and you made her day because you genuinely feel good. Right? I know. I'm like Pollyanna right now. It's kind of disgusting. <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. Join me tomorrow. Join me on Sunday. Um, things are, uh, the energy is fantastic right now to start manifesting new things into your life. So I want to do everything that I possibly can to help you with that. Um, I wish I could make all your dreams come true, but I can give you the tools to make your dreams come true for yourself. So I love you guys. Really take good care of yourselves. And um, if I don't see you this weekend, I will see you on Monday morning for the daily reading. Bye.